Hey everybody, this is Travis, and I'm going to give you another tutorial here on uh, creating an HTML web or creating a website using HTML5 elements, and of course, as well as CSS3, uh, and just a little tiny bit of JavaScript. If you saw my last tutorial, it's kind of a trailer as to what we're going to do. The finished product, I showed you what it was. This was the finished product. Uh, certainly, see my introduction video to show you exactly what we're going to do. But since this is the beginning of the tutorial, uh, this is a let's get started. I'm not going to do so many programming here. I'm just going to simply show you the tools that you need in order to achieve a website like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. Uh, let me go ahead and delete uh, delete this right here. Oh, actually, no, let me keep it. First thing you want to do is you want to create a uh, folder. I call it my website. Uh, you can go ahead and go inside your folder here. Uh, and you're going to have to get some images. I'm going to show you exactly where I got these images from. Now, actually, let me go ahead and go back. Create some subfolders called CSS, another subfolder called HTML5, and one called Images. Um, and it's really quick. If you don't know how to create a folder, it's real quick. Just right click anywhere on your desktop, hit New, Folder, and just, you know, whatever you want to name it. Um, so that's that's that. And of course, I uh, I don't want that because I already cre created one. Uh, so, anyways, just you know, go ahead and create these subfolders. Inside your Images folder, for this project, if you're following along with me, uh, I don't know, just kind of come up with some uh, pictures of laptops on here. Uh, I just, I don't know, I just found some pictures of laptops that I think would be kind of cool for this. Simply for that, I just went to Google, typed in uh, whatever the name of the laptop is, Sony Vio Fit 14 or Sony Vio Pro Limited, whatever the names of the models are. Do some little research on them, obviously, if you ever do a real write-up, a real website. Uh, and then you just simply write copy, save image as, um, you know, Vio, Laptop, whatever the name of the model is. Uh, then you would go to your uh, folder that you created, inside your images, and then you hit save. And that's it. Uh, and then I would go back later on into that to see if it was either a JPEG file or a PNG file, so when you reference it later on, we'll get into that when it comes more pertinent. But anyways, you'd hit save and you'd go on that way. Uh, some of the other, oops, I don't want to do that. Some of the other uh, images that we're going to need. Uh, if you notice, I have some dummy images here. Uh, in my tutorial, I'm going to make these into advertisements. Certainly, you can make them whatever you want, but it would make more sense for advertisements in this tutorial. I just type in dummy images in Google. It's the very first one here. Click on it. This is how you'd make a dummy image or with this uh, website called dummyimage.com. Type in the size that you want your image to be. So if I want a 125 ad, for example, uh, I go 125 by 125. Uh, maybe make a background color. And let's go with some sort of uh, bluish color, I guess. And it's for some reason it's not letting me click. Let me try that again. There we go. And format. You always want PNG most of the time. And then create some text that goes with that. I don't know. Uh, 125 add. That way I know what it is, sort of thing. Actually, it should be just like that. Uh, that way it kind of shows up here. And you just hit enter. And there you go, 125 add. And you could reference this. You could just copy down this link here and reference it later on your HTML. Or you could do what I did and just go up to the image itself. Go to save image as. Uh, make sure you're inside your. Uh, website in the images folder and I'm gonna save this as I don't know 125 ad or whatever you named it I think I named mine ad block 125 whatever you want to name it and you hit save and that's it cancel I'm gonna cancel because I already have it saved on there so that's how you do dummy images so we did these two already um, also in my images folder let's go back to it you'll notice I have some icons uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and you kind of wonder where is that at? Well, if you go to my website, you'll see it on here, and they are clickable. So obviously the idea is when we we'll click on it, we we'll go to the Twitter page, the Facebook page, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and uh, show you how you do that. Oops, what do I don't keep doing that for. You would go to your, go to Google, type in social icons for images, click on it. Uh, and then you just find something you'd be interested in. Uh, for example, on this one, let's say I wanted this one. Certainly, you could pick any one you want. Uh, you would just save the image as, 
we'll name it social icons, which I've already have it on here, but that's okay. I'll just save over it. That's cool. I'll put it on my desktop. You can certainly put it anywhere you want. Go back to your desktop. And to, you know, to get the individual ones, like you see how it's individual like this, because if you open this up, it's all of them. Uh, you right click on there, set, put edit. And it should open it up in paint. If it doesn't, then you can file open it with paint. Hit the selector tool here and try to get as close as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but like so. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. I'm going to hit file new as in a new. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to save. And I'm going to hit paste. And bam, now you got yourself a Twitter image on here, which is really nice. Then you're going to hit uh, file. Save as. Um, again, you want to go to your folder that you created, my website, images, and I'm going to save it as, well, Twitter. Twitter icon or the Twitter or whatever you want to name it, and you'd simply hit save. And you should always hit PNG, it's always preferable to do that. So our, I'm going to cancel because I already have it. And obviously, you would save this, but. I mean, don't save here. And you would obviously do that for all of them. Your Twitter icons, YT icons, everything else. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you. Uh, whenever you do do that, I forgot to do this part. You want to hit the resize button. And you want to make sure you have 40 by 42 pixels or 40 by 45 pixels. Something like that. Uh, so before you save it, or you can go back into it and edit as well. Uh, make sure that your pixels are at a certain, like around 40, 45-ish. Something like that, so it's not so big and so humongous and huge. Uh, probably you want to uncheck this button too. Uh, anyways, I just want to show you that. Forgot to forgot to do that. And you want to save it. And you want to do that for all of them: your, your YouTube, your Twitter, Reddit, whatever you want to use in your particular website. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, you notice I have stars here, uh, like rating type stars. Like for example, I'm going to rate a certain computer, uh, that sort of thing. Same thing as before, just typed in rating stars in Google. Find which one you want. You're going to do the same trick I showed you. You're going to do the selection tool here after you hit the right click and edit. Uh, and then you're going to save it as star.png or whatever. And then you want to save your half star at half star.png. So, you know, try to find something that's got a half star in it. So, for example, this one would be a perfect one. Um, certainly you could find other ones. I'm sure if you look hard enough, you could find a blue one like I have or... A green one or something. Uh, so that's all you want to do right there. So we got that. Uh, we found the social icons part. Next thing I want to tell you about is Notepad++. It's a text editor that you can use um, so that we can go ahead and get started um, and make it all our code. Uh, you can use Notepad++. I've recommended it in the past. It's, it's really good stuff. Or you can use Komodo. Uh, this is Komodo. Um, and I like to use Komodo. You can go to just type in Komodo under Google and download it. It's free. Uh, I like Komodo simply because um, it helps me with my syntax. Uh, certainly, you don't have to use it though. You can use whatever you want. You can use Notepad Plus Plus Komodo. Anything is fine for this tutorial. Only thing I would advise you not to use is uh, Notepad because it's kind of boring. It doesn't have any color to it, so it doesn't really tell you if you're doing anything wrong or not. Uh, so go ahead and download Notepad Plus Plus or Komodo. Uh, if you want to follow along with me on this tutorial, then you would download Komodo. And I can go ahead and get rid of all this. This is just some stuff I was doing earlier. Okay, and let's see, I talked about that. Also, uh, this is your HTML5 uh, reset style sheet. And I'm going to show you how what that is all about here. Let me go into our folder, into my CSS folder. And I have a thing called Reset. I'm going to click on it. It's going to open it up in Komodo here. Okay, if you notice, it's got a bunch of uh, stuff here. It might be a little confusing right now. But basically, it means that you're trying to style certain elements within your HTML. I know this is going a little over, uh, uh, over the basics right now. But uh, basically, you want to style the body a certain way. Your div tags, your span tags, your object tags. All these different tags a certain way. And by default, if you download the reset.css file here, it's going to put the margin, the padding, the border, and all that to zero. And I'll explain all that in my tutorial uh, when it comes pertinent.
but you definitely want to initialize things to a, like a zero or uh, to a certain aspect that you want it to because um, it really helps things out. Also, you can make like a default font for your for your CSS setup, uh, your default font sizes, colors, whatever. Uh, but you want to get too heavy into it. You want to make it really basic for all websites. So that's why I, I, I recommend you do uh, you download this reset.css, and I'm gonna show you how you link it in your um, in your folder uh, or in your file, excuse me, on the, when you get to your HTML portion of this uh, tutorial here. But basically, it's got everything defaulted on here, how you normally would want a website to, to, to look like under CSS. Um, and you can put your own customization in here. Uh, for example, I didn't want any underlines under my list style types. I'll give you an example what I mean by that. Uh, by default, these are, are underlined up here. Uh, and I didn't want any, I didn't want these to be underlined, uh, so I put list style type none. And we'll get into all that when it becomes more pertinent. I'll explain everything in more detail when we get to the CSS portion of the tutorial. Uh, but it is highly recommended you download some sort of default type of uh, uh, style sheet, though. And you want to put that inside your CSS folder. And to get that, you go to the HTML5 doctor. I typed in Google. I did a Google search. Uh, I just typed in HTML5 doctor reset CSS. It should be like the first or second page. And so here it is. And so you simply all you want to do is you want to copy and paste this. Oh, I went too far. Copy. You want to go to your text editor, whether it be Notepad++ or Komodo like me. I already have it on here, but what you normally would do, you hit New, New File. You want to paste it on there. I hit Control V. And you want to file, save as, and we named it reset.css. And I want to name it as, uh, I want to make sure that it's inside my folder, which would be my website under CSS. And that's simple. All you do is hit save, and it's going to replace it. It's going to give me an error because I already have it on here, but. Yeah, it's, it's going to give me an error because it's already open. I'm using it already. But if this, if you were doing this, it wouldn't give you this error. And that'd be it. And then you'd save it and it'd be on your CSS folder. So anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to X out of this because I already have it on here. So why would give me that error? Uh, so that's all that you need to do for that. So we took care of what we need initially for our CSS. Uh, now our HTML. I'm going to delete this. I was getting ahead of myself here. I'm going to go back to your text editor. In my case, I'm using Komodo. Again, File, New, HTML5. Uh, you can put a title in here. We'll make it called um, Review Website. Whatever you want to name it. You want to hit File, Save As, and whatever you want to name it, we'll call it Review Website. And make sure, again, we have it saved under HTML. And it'll automatically give the HTML extension for it. At least it will in Komodo. If you're using Notepad++, you want to put the .html uh, at the end. That's the only difference you got to do. And then you're ready for, for some code. Um, so that should be it for that. I think we're pretty well good here. So we have everything we need to get started. Uh, so on the next tutorial, which would be the real part one, uh, this is kind of a part zero, an introduction. So now we have all the tools ready, everything necessary. Um, so we're going to hit the ground running on the next part, and we're going to start coding, get in all the HTML, the CSS, and really get into it heavy. So I hope to see you next episode. Uh, this is Travis signing out, and I'll see you next time.